Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome to my channel. In tonight's video, I'm featuring both some new and old products from Gina K Designs. I'm going to be creating these postage themed cards using the new layering stencil uh, carnation from the new card kit. So here is a look at the card kit. This is the All Things Spring card kit. Of course, jam packed with lots of product, a couple stamp sets and dies, and including this layering carnation stencil. Something else being released is a brand new Master Layouts 14. Now, I don't have this one in my hands just yet, but I did want to let you know about this one. And there's also a coordinating stencil. I know Gina's going to be using it in her live video, and I don't have it, but I wanted to create something similar. So I went back through and picked out some old Master Layout sets. This is the Layered Carnation Stencil. It is a four-piece stencil. Two layers create the flower, two layers create the leaves and the stems, and Gina's stencils are all labeled down in the bottom left-hand corner, one, two, three, and four. Now to do my stenciling, I decided to dig out this paper inking palette from Picket Fence Studios. I just recently got it. I'm trimming off the very top so I don't have to deal with that sticky bottom when you try and open and close it. Just coming in from the top is a lot easier. This is the 10 by 10. Now, this is very similar to the waffle flower mat that they have out there, the sticky mats. Very similar to it. It's clear. It's kind of got that stamp feeling to it, like what your stamps are made out of. I don't 100% know what this is made out of, but I do really like it. I feel like the plastic wasn't so hard to pull off. And there's also a little ridge on the edges, so I know which side is to be facing up. So here I'm just pulling back that plastic. It is a large mat. They do have a variety of sizes and I'm going to place this onto my glass work surface. This is going to help hold my cardstock and my stencil in place. But of course, there are lots of ways that you can attach your stencil over your card front. This is just a product that I wanted to try out tonight. I am taking a piece of layering weight white cardstock from Gina K Designs and I'm placing it onto this palette. Then I'm going to take the first layer of the stencil. It's labeled down in that bottom left-hand corner, as I mentioned, and I'm going to position this over the front of my cardstock. So when I push down on the edges of the stencil, that mat is going to grip onto the stencil and hold it in place. For my first flower, I am going to go with kind of a peachy coral color. I'm starting out with the first layer using Peach Bellini and the Gina K Designs blending brushes. I'm going to go very light handed because there are two layers to this flower. So that second layer is going to be adding the kind of shadow areas or give it a little dimension. So I don't need to go too heavy handed on this first round. Once I have this color applied, I'm going to just carefully peel up that stencil. Sometimes I use my fingers. Sometimes I use a set of tweezers, just depending on what's handy. So this is the first layer. The first layer alone, even if you don't use the second layers, look really pretty. Now I am adding that second layer over the top. It lines up real easily. The areas that are white get covered up with the second layer of the stencil. And this lines up over the flower, so it's going to create kind of those shadow areas for it or uh, just giving it a little bit of dimension. I hate to reuse that word all the time, but it really does kind of just add some character to our flower. How is that? So this second color is Coral Reef using a mini blending brush for that peel this one back and it's a beauty. I have re-fallen in love with Coral Reef and Peach Bellini. Now the third layer of the stencil is going to be the stems and the leaves. Now this one, there is gonna be a little bit of a white gap in between the stems and the flowers. They don't line up completely right next to it, so just be aware of that. The first color for this layer of the stencil, I'm going to be using Apple Mint. I don't very often bring it out, but I do really love it. It is a really nice light and bright green. And I do have a brush kind of specific for that because I feel like I can get lost in the other greens. Now, the last layer of the stencil is going to be adding that dimension and that extra color. And for this, I'm using grass green. So again, I just brought in a mini blending brush for this because these are kind of small areas. I don't really need a big brush for this, but either size blending brush will work. 
Now, after I finish this, I have two other color ideas that I wanted to use for the carnations. So when I get to those, I will briefly explain the colors I used and then kind of just show you the reveal. And any card design I do tonight, well, it's really just one card design just in different colors, but you can do this with any of the layering stencils, any images. And Gina's new master layout set had really inspired me. And like I said, I don't have it just yet. I definitely am going to get my hands on that. But I thought using these older master layout sets to create this was, I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. I really didn't. Now I'm moving on to a few other color combinations. So I cleaned off my stencil with some rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to give my colors more of a two-tone blend. This one, I started out with medium orchid going over the entire open area of the stencil. And then I'm leaving that in place and I'm going to bring in medium lilac. Now for this color, I'm gonna place it just kind of down towards the bottom of each of the flowers. So I am using the mini blending brush for this. I get a little bit more control when I'm using the mini blending brush in that smaller area, especially in those smaller flowers. So again, just applying that down towards the bottom of each flower. Now I can remove stencil one. I'll bring in stencil two, and I'm going to bring in the dark colors of these shades. So starting out with dark orchid, I'm gonna to go towards the top of each of the flowers, add that color. I don't really need a ton, so I probably could have used my mini blending brush for this. And then I'll come in with the dark, I think, it, what is it? Dark lilac. So I get my two, I get the orchid and the lilac uh, mixed up a lot. So this one is the dark lilac, bringing it in towards the very bottom of each of the flower. And this is adding that darker shade to it. Now you could use the mediums like we had in the first layer of the stencil and just gone a little bit heavier handed with them. But I really like to step up those second layers. I am going to use the same color of greens for the leaves and the stem. So I'm just giving you the reveal here. And then once I peel this up off of that sticky mat, it's so gorgeous. I love those colors together. But of course, I had to bring in a rainbow. So again, I cleaned off my stencil. Now this one, I definitely want the mini blending brushes because I'm really going to need the control on these. I started with sweet corn ink and I'm adding it to the center of each flower. Yellow tends to get lost when I create a rainbow, so I really wanted to make sure I started with that first. Now again, this is still just the first layer of the stencil that I'm adding all of these colors to. This next one is going to be the, I believe I had it listed as medium carnation, which, wow, carnation and sweet corn, look at that color combination. I want to make another card using just those colors because they are such a beautiful blend. So I'm adding that to the left side of each of the flowers. And then I'm going to add a blue to the other side. Again, this is still just the first layer of the stencil. So you can really get a lot of use out of each of the layers just by adding multiple colors. The blue that I'm using is a turquoise C, and then I have my mini blending brushes off on the side that still have the orchid and lilac on them. So I'm going to bring them in, or just one of them in, that still has some leftover ink on it, and add it to the very, very outer edge that has the pink. And that was my way of working purple into my rainbow carnations. Here is the reveal for layer one. I will go ahead and add the layer two. I'm going to speed up the video because I'm going to be using... I think the same colors for each one, just going a little heavier handed to darken each of those layers. And when we get that overlap, it just absolutely creates magic. So here is that carnation and then coming in on the edge with the turquoise sea and then also a little bit of that orchid for over the pink area. Then we'll have the big reveal where I peel this up and I will show you what the flowers look like just with these two layers. It's it's so stunning in person. And again, I use the same color, the Appleman and the grass green, I believe I listed for the leaves and flowers. If I say something incorrectly in the video, I will have all of the exact supplies used listed down below in the video description. 
Now, an idea I had after I had just ink blended all of those panels was stamping the elegant script background over this. I actually would have stamped it first if I would have thought of it, but I didn't. So I'm going to stamp it over the top. I'm placing this in my Misty tool. And here I'm just getting an idea to make sure that my panel is going to fit with that background stamp because all of my panels are four and a quarter by five and a half. With these background stamps, you really want to make sure you condition them well. So I rub my hand over them. I clean them with my tidy towel. I ink it up with Versamark, everything I can do to make sure they're conditioned really well. I'm going to ink this in Skeleton Leaves ink. And when I push this down, I am, I'm intentionally not pushing everywhere because I didn't want it to be complete coverage. I wanted it to be kind of spotty. Now, I know this is kind of difficult to see in the video, but it is very spotty on there. It's not a complete stamped background. And I love how that came out. I'm also going to add some splatters to each of the backgrounds. So these are great just as is, but I absolutely love adding splatters. This one, I'm just using any type of white acrylic ink. You can see I make quite a mess on my surface. The splat box doesn't always catch it all. And then this is the gold spray, I, uh, the Glimmer Mist spray from Gina K Designs. She's got a few of them. So I have the gold one that I'm adding to some of these backgrounds as well. And then here is a look at all three of those backgrounds. I let them sit and dry for a little bit so that I don't smear my splatters. And now I'm going to start turning them into cards. So here is where I dug through my stash. This is from Master Layouts 9 and Master Layouts 11. And this is a little different than the new Master Layouts that's being released because each section of this postage area is proportional, whereas the new one, there's some different sizes. So I'm taking this first one, it's going to create my background piece and I'm die cutting it from white cardstock. So you can see, you can even use that negative piece, kind of that, that frame. You can use that on your backgrounds as well to frame a design. This one, it's going to kind of punch out all of those perforated areas. Here's a look at how that frame would be over one of my images, but I had way too much fun with this postage design. So I didn't use the frame today. Now, I know this is very scary and it broke my heart to do this too, but it turns out really good is I'm using the other die to die cut out my stenciled panels and it trims them out into these rectangles that fit perfectly onto that postage mat layer, I guess I'm going to call it. They fit perfectly in there. So I'm going to complete my picture. They look just like postage. They fit perfectly onto that matte layer. And it even leaves a little white border around each edge as well. And then I brought in some of my Peach Bellini cardstock, which tied in just so perfectly with the Peach Bellini and Coral Reef ink, which is one of the reasons I love Gina's inks and cardstock so well is because they match so well. Loving this. I was very, very happy how that was looking. I loved it all so much. I die cut out the other two stenciled panels and I know it was very scary to do it to the rainbow one, but I really love how this came out. Now that I have my card designs pretty much laid out, I needed some sentiments. So I'm going to use the modern roses stamp set out of the kit. These have some beautiful sentiments and coordinating dies to go with it. I stamped them all in the black ink and I'm going to die cut them out with the coordinating die. So I'm going to hold them down with a post-it tape and you can see I stamped out multiple just in case I make more of these cards. I will show you the assembly of one of the cards and then I'll show you the completed ones at the end of the video. For my rainbow card, I decided to bring in sweet corn cardstock. It is one of my favorite colors of yellow. So I'm so excited that Gina brought it back. Now, I also wanted to pop everything up. I felt this just needed to all have some more dimension to it. I can pass these out to friends or put them in a padded envelope to mail them out. So I flipped over my individual panels and I'm going to be attaching the Gina K Designs foam squares to each of them. I ended up going with, uh, <laughs> it sounds like a lot, six on each panel, but I wanted to make sure it had full coverage and it wasn't have any saggy middles, so to speak. Now on the back of the mat, 
I brought out my foam tape because it just went a little quicker than the foam squares. So I can remove the backing of the foam tape and place this over my panel of sweet corn cardstock that is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. Now, as I finished putting on my foam squares, I realized I completely forgot to stamp something. Also in the kit is a small stamp set. It's got these cute critters on here. This is called Spring Friends. And tucked away on this stamp set are some little additional sentiments and numbers that go on postage. So there's like forever, um, there's 50 cents, 10 cents, things like that. I completely forgot to do that. So I am taking them on a small comfort block. I'm using the Versifying Claire black ink because I have a bunch of splatter on them. So I'm really kind of batting a thousand here with trying to do this in the right order. I'm going to stamp these not only on the panels that I have the foam squares on before I attach it, but I'm also going to bring in the other panels that I have stamped. So I'm trying to be a little proactive there and get those. There is one panel on my rainbow colored carnation that I messed up the stamping and I was really crushed about it, but you know, things go through the mail, postage gets blurry. I couldn't figure out how to cover it up. So it's gonna just stay that way. It's that 10 cent down in that bottom left-hand corner. You may not have noticed it unless I pointed it out, but I'm pointing it out. So I removed all the foam squares off the back of the panels, lined them up and placed them on top of that matte layer, that postage matte layer. So beautiful, totally loving how this came together if you can't tell. Here is me trying to figure out if I can get a sentiment to cover up my little boo-boo there. I decided there just wasn't anything I could place there that I liked sitting there because it's so close to the bottom corner there. So I decided to just say heck with it. I'm leaving it smudged, you know, handmade, not Hallmark. So I am taking my sentiment. I layered it with another piece of cardstock and I'm going to place this right in the center of my design. That's just where it felt like it needed to go for me. I love the font on this and the two different styles of sentiments on it. I just really enjoyed making these cards. So now I'll give you a look at the other finished cards that I have. This is the one with the peach bellini and coral reef. I had stamped those additional elements on there, the 50 cents, the forever and first class. And I used the birthday wishes. That one I tucked down kind of in the bottom right hand corner. And then my purple card where I used the lilac and orchids. This one's got the love and hugs that I tucked down in the bottom left hand corner. And I am just realizing as I voice over this that I switched up my two panels on that orchid and lilac card. That purple card, I didn't line them up the way they were supposed to, but I th still think it turned out pretty neat. I hope you enjoyed today's card tutorial. And if you have these master layouts in your stash, dig them out, use them with your layering stencils, or if you are interested in the brand new master layout and the card kit that's being released tonight from Gina K Designs, everything will be linked down below in my video description. Thank you for spending time with me today, and I will be back soon with more inspiration using the new Gina K Designs card kit.